Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. The book's about cars, but often people write to me when they want drag reduction on their truck. So let's take a look at that topic. Now, before I go on, I should say, I haven't trialed any of what I am about to describe on a vehicle like this. I have not done on-road testing, I have not done pressure testing, tough testing, fuel economy testing. So these are my best guesses based on testing I have done on cars and based on the technical literature. So with that rather major caveat, let's look at this particular truck. Now it's got a work body that's been obviously fitted to the rear and the work body causes quite a lot of problems of its own in terms of aerodynamics. And of course the vehicle itself is not a terribly aerodynamically slippery vehicle either. Now, looking at that first part uh, before we get to the vehicle, obviously this truck's got some stuff piled on top. That's not good for aerodynamic flow. So whatever it is piled at each end on top shouldn't be there. But the biggest issue is this square edge. Yes, the body increases the projected frontal area of the truck, but it's when the airflow hits this and it will flow up and then it will separate and there will be separated flow across the top. That radius or that edge should be a radius, should be a gentle radius. And the same with the side edges. They shouldn't be sharp and square either. And so people talk about just putting a deflector there, but that's not really the point. The deflector has to smoothly curve onto those flat surfaces so the airflow will stay attached as it wraps around. The other big problem is this gap. You'll have airflow, turbulent airflow is acting almost like a parachute. Airflow will be entering there. So all that gap should be sealed off. Sealed there, sealed there, rounded at the front, rounded at the sides. All right, I'll talk a little bit about the back of that body in a moment, but they're the most major things that come from that attached body. What about the truck itself? Well, let's have a look at my marvelous drawings. So I've got the rounded edge at the front and it should be rounded down that side. I've filled the gap in there as I suggested. Now, the truck itself, well, I'd be putting some air curtain guides, some external guides there to try and smooth airflow past the front wheel. I would cover that front wheel with a disc cover, leaving probably a few holes for brakes, brake cooling, and I would put a very deep front spoiler. Now, a lot of those things are not things that I recommend for cars. For a car, I'd talk about a complete under tray and wanting to get airflow under, but for a truck with such a rough underside, it might just simply be a lot easier to put as deep a front spoiler on as you can. Make it out of flexible rubber so when it hits the road, it doesn't get damaged. So we stop air flowing under the car as much as possible. To stop air flowing in from the sides, because there will be low pressure under the car if we've blocked the airflow, we'll put deep side skirts on and we'll cover the rear wheel so the air can flow more easily past that wheel. We don't need to put a disc cover on, we could if we wanted, but just covering the wheel. These wheels are wheel arches that are so large. Now, at the back of the vehicle body, this added body, I'd put a, a extension down each side and also one across the top, forming effectively a box cavity. That disrupts the, the flow behind the vehicle a little bit, stops um, some of the flow patterns developing that otherwise can cause drag. And so we would do that there. We could do that on the vehicle's body itself, the original body, but then it makes it hard to see tail lights from different angles, indicators, and so on. Now, what would we achieve by doing all of that? I don't know. I'm not going to make any guess about percentage improvements, but I would be absolutely staggered if we did all of those things, we wouldn't get a measurable fuel economy improvement, mileage improvement at uh, normal highway speeds. So what have I covered? The front air dam as low as possible. The front turning vanes large. Front wheel covers smooth as possible. Side skirts as deep as possible. Rear wheel spats where we cover the opening just to make it flush curved front body nose piece for that additional uh, device that's been carried on the back, filling the gaps around the body between that additional freight carrying uh, you know, device and, and the original car bodywork, and a rear box cavity extending the sides and the top. Now, if it were my vehicle, 
I'd do all of those things with masking tape, plastic sheet, a little bit of rubber. I'd do it all temporarily, and then I'd do some testing. And with that much change, that magnitude of changes, you should be able to see change really quite quickly. There's a lot there. Now, it wouldn't take much money to try all those things. It wouldn't even take much time to try all those things uh, in terms of making those. And uh, look, I, I even think a few hundred kilometers, a few hundred miles of testing should show if there's going to be a, a major improvement. If you can't see any improvement or the improvement is infinitesimal, don't worry about it, take it all off. But I'd be pretty confident you would be able to see a measurable improvement doing all of those things at once. The book's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. Obviously, we now we've been talking about a truck, but a lot of the ideas are covered in that book. And car aerodynamic testing for road and track, if you want to measure some of these things, see airflow patterns, actually measure uh, aerodynamic pressures that are occurring on panels, things of that sort. Thank you.